Before last year, Ajax were the dominant side of the Eredivisie for the five years prior to that under Eric Ten Hag. Now, Ajax had an absolutely shocking year last season, finishing 13 points behind Feyenoord, and they brought in a brand new manager. Sparta Rotterdam's Maurice Stein is the new gaffer here at the Amsterdam team, and we're going to be rebuilding his very different 4-3-3 today, and hopefully getting some fantastic results with Ajax. What's going on there, guys? Kempi here, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to the video. Thank you guys for coming back. It is a brand new week. It is a brand new start. And today, we're going to be doing Ajax's Maurice Stein. Brand new manager. Last season, comes sixth in the table with Sparta Rotterdam, who are predicted to finish down in 14th. A very different style of manager to what the Amsterdam outfit are used to. To having in charge so it's going to be very interesting to see how he gets on at the Eredivisie Legends Ajax if you guys can make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well it helps me out massively and obviously this is part of the uh, rebuild battle and it's obviously going to be Feyenoord as well a massive rivalry in Holland Ajax versus Feyenoord people are asking for an Arnie slot tactic so that is going to be coming tomorrow over on Sword Out SI so make sure you're subscribing to them as well but without further ado how have we done with our Ajax. Well, it's invincible. 31 wins, 3 draws, 0 losses. An unbelievable season this season. And from what you can see as well, we didn't even have a top goal scorer. We weren't absolutely dominant in goals. We were just fantastic. We conceded 12 goals all season and scored 89. We were defensively sound. We were an absolute menace to teams. Anyone that come to the Johan Cruyff Arena got absolutely battered. Average rating wise, Steven Berghaus, Henrique Araujo, who was a signing uh, that the board made, and Dusan Tadic have done absolute wonders. 23 clean sheets and 34 games for Geronimo Rulli. I do set transfers be made by the board, so I literally um, staff transfers transfers and contracts and let the director of football do it all because it's a tactic rebuild. I'm not going to go through and do all that, but it's the 23-24 season. So rather than there being zero signings, I let the board do it. And as you can tell, they did spend a fair bit of money, but there's no one here that is, I'd say, out of Ajax's realms of possibility, especially as Kenneth Taylor left for £50 million to Borussia Dortmund and Stephen Berghaus left in January for £22 million, and he still ended up scoring 11 goals in 17 games. So I'm sure he would have been right up there in the top goal scorers lift. But if we head back to the Eredivisie, like I said, absolutely fantastic season for us. Backlifting the, the title here in the Eredivisie is fantastic to see. 89 goals and 12 conceded. 58% possession as well. The fewest shots against us. We got 177 shots against us in 34 games. That's about five shots a game. That is outrageous. And most shots for, we were seconds to final show and we know we're not going to absolutely blast you with 30 shots a game, but we will certainly dominate the play and we'll certainly be the better side. And you know what makes me even more excited is that we were actually invincible for the whole season in every single competition. To the fact we even won the Europa League final 3-0 against AS Monaco. So let me show you the highlights of this game. Well, if you guys can make sure as well to like the video, subscribe to the channel and follow on all these four wonderful things. And obviously, as well, we do have a Patreon where you can get the rebuild for us from the last couple of weeks and obviously anything going forward as well. The link is down in the description down there. And thank you to these absolute legends. You guys are literally making my dreams come true and you've literally allowed me well, obviously not the money from the Patreon. That would be ridiculous if that ever happens. But you've helped massively towards me getting a brand new PC, which is coming next week, which means we are set. We are locked in for all of the content, which means it makes it a hundred times easier for me to make these videos as it won't take me seven hours to do a tactic sim. It will take me seven minutes, which is beautiful. And obviously as well, the content, we need to get the PC ready for FM25. So we're here for a long time, not a good, well, we're here for a good time and a long time, but we're not gonna be going anywhere. So make sure you're liking the video and subscribing to the channel. But like I said, a Europa League final, we're gonna start off with a throw in from Jurian Timber on the right. He finds Mokuda's Timber down the wing. is gonna try and get it in the box. Beats his man eventually, whips it in, and it's a backstick header for Southampton's Seku Mara on the left hand side. A very nice header at the backstick. Ravella, another sign in, backstick corner. Josip Sotalo with a header at that time. Again, quite a realistic sign, I think. And then here you're going to see a nice goal as well. Yango Herrera spreading the play out wide to Owen Windau, who finds Seku Mara in the box. A low cross into Brian Brobby, who is a fantastic young striker on FM to make it 3 0. 24 shots in this game, 7 on target, a 2.18 XG, dominating possession against the uh, Monaco outfit, who finished 
second in the league and as well so very very happy with that result in the europa league final when obviously like i said we won everything we didn't lose a game all season in any competition i don't know if that's ever been done before obviously you know you got the arsenal invincibles they lost in the champions league you know they didn't go invincible in everything this ajax team has won every single game and i think we drew six games overall in every single competition in the calendar year which is beautiful um, so the KMV Becker we won as well a 1-0 victory against FC Twente and the Johan Cruz Skull we won on penalties against Feyenoord at the very start of the season so buzzing to see we win them as well and points tally is absolutely fantastic the squad at Ajax is decent but it's certainly not you know invincible level if we head to the season preview it's actually very tight at the top of the league we're 8 to 15 PSV 13 to 2 final 7 to 1 I think at the start we were 4 to 5 if I remember correctly when I started this out so you know odds have certainly got a little bit longer but we were 4 to 5 close favorites for final in second so very very happy with the results of the season the tactic itself as well like I said this manager is a little bit different he has not really got too much about him I read up as much as I could on the TFA total football analysis so thank you to them I do subscribe to them every month to get this sort of knowledge on these managers and this is sort of what I've come up with now he's a manager that doesn't really build up from the back in terms of center backs he's quite a direct manager but then short passing he's quite good out wide with the bombing on wing backs and a lot of free roaming in the front three the striker will drift out wide and it's a pretty difficult formation to try and explain but it's a 4-3-3 three, three, and the results obviously are absolutely fantastic we'll start off in goal with a sweeper keeper on defend a uh, wing back on attack on the right hand side with cross aim center and stay wider and the left hand side as well cross aim center and stay wider wing back on attack two ball pen defenders on defend with no further instructions and a dlp on defend in dm with no further instructions you've then got a box to box midfielder on the left center mid row will take for your wrists get further forward and tackle harder and a center midfield on support on the right will shoot less often get further forward and tackle harder inverted winger on support roam from position sit narrower and tackle harder inside forward on support on the left roam from position sit narrower and tackle harder and a complete forward on attack up front with no further instructions if you want someone that's just going to blast you goals in stick this in advance forward i say that every time i enjoy the complete forward a hell of a lot because the complete forward possesses the technical abilities of a deep line forwards so they're going to drop in and link up the play but also the scoring ability of a poacher and a target power of target forward so they will be everything you want in a striker as well as they'll drift out wide you can see it's got take more risks draw more run for position moving the channels i love the complete forward it almost reminds me of a bit of a harry kane sort of position so one of my favorite striking positions on this game i'm going to set to a positive mentality in possession it's shorter passing uh, pass it into space, play it out of the defence, be expressive, and then focus play down the wings because it's a very wing-based system with overlaps on the left and the right because even though we've got the inverted wingers, the wing-backs are going to bomb on so far forward. The almost a deep line playmaker drops in to be a three at the back two centre mids, and then you've got almost a wing-back, wing-back, inside forwards, striker. So it's a very cool system to play it's quite different like i said uh, and then slightly higher tempo and a very wide attacking width as well like i said really getting that width even though you've got the inverted forward and inside winger uh, it's really key to have it as wide as possible when i think that is what Maurice stein really does try and do with his teams in transition we are taking long kicks not taking short kicks which is where this sort of direct approach from building the back comes in like i said from the research from the tfa that i have seen he takes long kicks forward to the front line and then when you get into the front line it's a passing directness of shorter so it's almost a you know fast build up from the back into sort of the uh, playmakers in the cam roll the wingers and then it's sort of you know short tick attack a passing into the box low crossing goal it's a very different sort of uh 433 to what we normally do make on the channel uh countering and counter pressing the counter press as well is such a key thing for this manager it's with this extremely high pressing system and prevent the short growth distribution with a high press line and a standard defensive line because again it is a very high pressing system uh, again that's all the research from the tfa so a massive thank you to them obviously we've not only tested with ajax i've tested with another further three teams as well including psg his old team sparta rotterdam and the third team eludes me so we'll have to go through and check them results one quick thing i forgot to show you was the goals per game with ajax 2.62 goals per game 0.35 conceded is very very nice to see and squad wise the goals are coming from all over the place 23 goals 10 assists from Tabit Tadic 17 goals from Brovery 17 and 9 from Kudas 15 goals no assists for Enrico Araujo 11 and 2 from Sekou Mara 11 and 5 
from Steven Bergwijn. Assists as well going very nicely from the fullback positions. 10 from Windau and even Osip Stanic with 6 as well. Um, but very, very good on the sort of goal scorers and assist front as well. Very happy with the results of this one. And now we can go in to the results. Start off then with his old team, Sparta Rotterdam, predicted to come down in ninth position. We managed to finish in fifth place in this season as well, and also with the Europa Conference League. Now, they don't have the Europa Conference League in real life, and that is because um, they lost the playoff game against FC Twente, I believe, but in the sort of simulation that we've got from the sort of outside website, they do actually manage to win that one. So we got into the round 16 with the Europa Conference League and lost to Atlanta, who were a very, very strong side. So I'm not too fussed about losing to them. And the KMVB back as well we lost to PSB who end up finishing third in the league just to show you how good the tactic is Ajax in a normal sim second place at 72 points nine draws and four losses so a hell of a lot less goals uh, sort of you know points uh, and wins for that Ajax team we need to get Maurice Stein and me in charge it'll be a different story but fifth place very very happy with that um, you know it's quite clear of sixth place as well so great finish for uh, this sort of side uh, great form towards the end of the season as well Data Hub Wide's looking at 1.47 goals per game, 1.12. I forgot to show you with Ajax, but I believe it's about three and a half goals per game and 0.28 conceded per game it was only 12 goals conceded all season and 89 scored so maths wise that might be a little bit wrong it might be three goals a game and about 0 0.25 but yeah very very strong for Ajax and even with this sort of you know complete underdog side very good goals per game conceding less goals than we're expected as well which is great to see um, and obviously competition wise there's not too much else to show you goal scorers uh, the goals were very good 30 from Tobias Lauritsen uh, very very good on the goals from him as well which is fantastic to see in fact I know exactly what I'm going to do um, before this clip you would have seen the fact that I've shown you the goals and that because I'll have to show you that you need to see that so ignore everything I just said uh, Vito Van Cruz with 15 and 11 as well 5 and 10 from Marlos is also fantastic to see um, and you know some goals coming from different positions as well uh, PSG how did we get on with them well we actually got quarterfinal in the Coupe de France by Liverpool we did lose the semi-final of the Coupe de France oh sorry quarterfinal of the Champions League by Liverpool semi-final in the Coupe de France by Marseille we did win the trophy of the champs and we did win the league not as convincing as I would normally like with PSG 29 wins three draws and two losses but Data Hub 3.68 goals per game conceding too many maybe defensively not quite a sound Obviously, Ajax are incredibly dominant in their league. PSG, you'd expect to be a very, very similar outfit as well, uh, but not done very well. 50 goals are for Mbappe, 30 for Icardi, 24 and 27 for Neymar. Certainly missing sort of a really good winger to replace Messi. Romeo Lavia has come in. Uh, Fabian Ricardo Horta, Marco Verratti, uh, Kimpembe cut up with three goals as well. Um, some decent assist tallows as well. 13 from Horta, 9 from Angelino. Uh, 13 from Fabian, 17 from Verratti, uh, 17 from Mbappe, and obviously 27 from Neymar. So a decent season for PSG, not sort of blowing the water, water out of the park, but you know certainly a decent enough season. 95 goal difference, and again stats-wise, just conceding 30 and scoring 125, which is absolutely lovely to see. And the team that did win the Champions League was Barcelona. Certainly got on a little bit better here in at the Catalan club. Winning the league by two points ahead of Real Madrid. Winning the Champions League, a 1-0 victory against the team that knocked PSG out Liverpool. And also winning the Supercopa as well, a 2-0 victory against uh, Real Madrid. We lost the Copa del Rey in the semis to Real Madrid. So, you know, they got that one over us. But we'll take the treble and clean sweep elsewhere, which is fantastic to see. Again, Day Hub wise, 2.18 goals per game, 0 0.74 conceded. Squad wise, goals coming from all over the place. 40 from Lewandowski, 21 from Dembele. 17 from Fatty, 14 from Ferran Torres, and again, assists, a nice little spread from Dembele, Fatty, Gavi, Marcos Alonso, Sergio Roberto, them two fullbacks putting in absolute work, which is fantastic to see. But that is Maurice Stein's 4-3-3. If you guys can, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep an eye out for Arnie Slots 4231 tomorrow over on Sword Out SI. Make sure you're subscribing over there as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you guys next time.